So the kingdom that we are in and we draw from is an abundant kingdom. It's a, it's a surplus kingdom. It's an overflow kingdom. It's a kingdom of plenty. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit has revealed in the word of God a wisdom. Do you, do you know how many know you have wisdom? How many, how many know when that you get saved, you get the spirit of God? Do you know that, that Jesus is called the spirit of wisdom? And the spirit of revelation. You know he says if you ask for wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. You will say I have no degree, I have no exams. I don't even understand how I know this. It's the wisdom of God. God will give you a wisdom. And the Holy Spirit is revealed in the Word of God, a wisdom in how we, church, we online, can live continually out of an abundant place. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then yeah. to steward mm-hmm. our seed and our bread, that it may bring to us at the right time a harvest of blessing. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Big disclaimer this morning. Somebody's hid the water. Where's the water? Amen. And what do we say when I drink water? Amen. Big disclaimer for everybody this morning. With no apology, God is generous. Your heavenly Father is generous. And He wants you to thrive. And He wants you to be a blessed person. I know that sounds simple to you this morning, but a lot of preachers will not even say that in the pulpit. But God wants you to be a blessed person. What sort of a heavenly father do you have and do you serve and you're not a blessed person or you think he's out to get you or trick you up or send you sickness or remove stuff from you? That's not God. It's just not God. He wants you to flourish as a believer in every way. He prospers you internally. That, that is the greatest work. It's the greatest work of salvation. I think when we stand before the Lord at the end of time and we get a full revelation of what God lifted us from, took us from, it's just going to blow our minds. The gulf that he, the gulf that was against him, what he came and what he bridged and what he has done inside us and in our mind and our will and our emotions. And so he prospers the internal that I might flourish in life. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that the righteous will flourish as a palm tree. Now what does that look like? What is a flourishing person? I thought I just got saved, lived a miserable existence and then eventually went to heaven. Have you ever met Christians like that? This is not the plan of God. Jesus said, I've come to give you life. Life. Why would people that don't know Jesus live better than you? Live better in their minds and their way with their family. You're meant to, you're meant to be the wisest people on earth. That you would flourish in life. That you would flourish. That Jesus said, I've come to give you life. And you might have life. no abundant life, Zelda. Abundant, Pastor Zelda. Abund- you might have life, Anna. Shout abundant. abundant. Oh, you didn't really shout. You're quiet this morning. The psalmist said in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 67 and verse 1. This is what the psalmist says. Bless me. You see that word blessed, by the way? That's the totality of the person. That's, that's, that's everything about you. Everything about your family's domestic business. Everything. He says, bless me. Why did he want to be blessed? He says that your way... Or another translation says, health may be known in the earth. Come on. May be known in the earth. And your salvation to the nations that the way I live and the way I flourish is a testimony to those around me. Yeah. Yeah. Keep with me this morning. Amen. When the people of God knew how to handle our resources, our time, our talent, our, the body, just, just the way we do life, just the way we live. That the Lord is placed in the hand, it becomes a testimony yes. Right. Yeah. of the blessing of a perfect father, an abundant kingdom, the wisdom that he has brought us, brought us into. Yeah. It's a testament of the prosperous place within and how it causes us to, to root. Do you know what the Bible says that he wants you to reign in life? Yeah. Book of Romans, he wants you to reign in life, flourish in the kingdom. Thrive 
It doesn't mean you'll be a millionaire if that's what you think I'm preaching because I'm not preaching that this morning. But God wants you to thrive in the lean that you're in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Amen. That we just know how to do life. That we just be a people of joy and, and creativity and generosity. That we're abundant in our thinking. You know, a lot of people have a lot of trouble in their thought life. That's, that's a lot of trouble thinking from kingdom, anxious and fear. Do you know what happens when you understand how prosperous you are? You're healed in your mind. Yeah. Right. You, have, you have a clear mind. Your emotions aren't unstable. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was trying to talk to you about Jesus last. Jesus, God gave us emotions, but he didn't give us emotions to control us. Yeah. Right. Emotions don't, if, if your emotions control you, you may not even get out of bed in the morning. Right. Pastor may not even leave for church. <laughs> it's true. But we walk by fear if we don't let emotions, we reign in life over our emotions, oh, over how we think. That's why the Bible says, cast down thoughts that are different to what the Word of God says. Everything that exalts itself against the Word of God. We are to be abundant in our thinking. We, we are to flourish in our emotions. How, how we do that. We are to be, I just felt when we were singing the song, do you know the joy of the Lord is your strength? Amen. You are to have joy. Do you know the kingdom is righteousness? We teach a lot of people about being justified. People have struggled just to know they're justified. Yeah. Yeah. Because they put a lot of self-worth on themselves. But our worth is not on ourselves. The worth's on him this morning. Oh. He gives us his righteousness. You know that you've been justified, not by what you were. The devil will always tell you about what you were. But the Holy Spirit convicts you with who you are in Jesus Christ. And you're justified. And the kingdom in you is righteous. And tell the preacher this morning, it's peace, but it's also joy. It's also joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Sometimes you need to laugh, church. Sometimes I see people come to church and they fold their arms and they put their head down and they're all men most visible but to the, the life and soul of the party on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday where the house of the Lord is to be joyful. It's to be full of laughter. It's to be fun. We are to be normal people. We laugh on a Monday. You should be able to laugh on a Sunday. We are normal, aren't we, church? Sometimes weird, but... Turn to your neighbor and say, I think sometimes, no, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> We're to be anointed but normal. Yeah. Do you think Jesus didn't laugh for three and a half years? Do you think he didn't have jokes? What would it be like? Imagine living with 12 guys. I was at a family, <laughs> I was at a family gathering last night. It was very warm. There was 29 at the family gathering, my sister's house. And I went into one of the rooms where all of the young teenagers were. It smelled like a boy's room. <laughs> Just, it, it wasn't like this. <laughs> it was worse. It was like this in two weeks' time, right? <laughs> Jesus, was, Jesus was the most anointed. Yeah. Anointed of the whole, full of the Holy Spirit. Son of God, but normal. Otherwise, the, people, the common people couldn't receive him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just trying to make it real, church. Trying to make real, church real. <clears throat> so when you prosper here, your mind is clear. Your emotions here. You walk in wisdom, understanding. And it allows you to prosper. Do you know what the Bible says that Joseph was a prosperous person? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so it allows you to prosper like Joseph. Now listen to me. Whether you're in a prison or a palace. I mean, Joseph didn't wait until he was in the palace to say, and I, I went all through this, my brothers have betrayed me. I was in, I was in part of her house and the, the lady did what she did on me. And now I'm in a prison. Now I'm in the palace. Now I can be, no, he was prosperous in the prison. Because the prosperity wasn't to do with this environment. It was to do with what was inside. Come on. So he was prosperous in the prison. It's a little bit like, and I was thinking about him yesterday. Forgive me just for pausing this for a moment, but I was thinking about John Bunyan. Do you know that John Bunyan was in prison for seven years? Yeah. You know that most people today, sort of four or five hundred years later, will say, if I could have any two books in my bookcase, it would be the Bible and Pilgrim's Progress. But do you know when he was in the prison, he wrote Pilgrim's Progress? And we all read it. Was he prosperous in his burn in the prison? Of course he was. Because it's not to do with environment, it's to do with what's internal. Come on. So you can, you can be in a dungeon and be prosperous. Right. You can be like Joseph and be in the prison, and the prison guard says, You're so prosperous, I want to put you over all the prisoners. Come on. 
Preach. Yep. This is what I'm talking about, church. Prosperity internally comes from the kingdom that you draw from. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it is understanding this way of life that God originally planned for every human. God originally planned for every human. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And we've done it in our life groups. He's planned it for every human, but when he brings the kingdom, we now have access to that same place that Adam had. Yeah. But it's better. Good. Because God will never leave you. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have access. What did he say to Adam? Enjoy the trees. Because his Lord called everything good. And, he's, and he put him in a place that was good. Yeah. Right. This is what Heavenly Father did. He put him in a place. Where he said, I want you to enjoy life. Yeah. And then he said, I'm also going to make you work. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And he said, it's going to be a blessing because you're going to steward. You're going to tan what's here. Yeah. And this is going to be a blessing to you. And then he said that there's one no over there. It's one tree. But there's thousands of trees you can eat off. There's just one no. <laughs> there's just one no. Because I want you to stay in the boundaries of, of love. And church, I have to tell you, sometimes when I'm off base, and I think when you're off base, and you're out of sync, we're, we're moving outside the boundaries of love. Right? And then when we put ourselves back in, the flow of drawing from him and his kingdom, suddenly life comes again. You put yourself out of it. You don't understand why things aren't working. You put yourself. That's why Jesus said, seek first the 